Koenigsegg are used to making ridiculous hypercars with bonkers top speed numbers and minimum four-figure horsepower numbers. However, now they've created an electric motor that makes 330 horsepower that is somehow smaller than my head. That's madness. Now, two of these motors with this single inverter will make 660 horsepower and weigh less than 85 kilos. This tiny bundle of power is the work of Swedish hypercar makers Koenigsegg. So how does it actually work? Let's get into it. The motor has been dubbed the quark, which is actually a type of soft spreadable cheese and probably the noise a posh duck makes. Wow. Unfortunately, that isn't how it got its name. It's much more complicated and scientific than that. And there's no easy way to tell you the real definition of the term quark. The quark is any of several elementary particles that is postulated to come in pairs as up and down varieties. And they have one as a positive charge of two plus two thirds, and the other has a charge of negative one third and they're held together to make hadrons. Essentially, they're the bits that make up protons and neutrons. You, you remember that from physics? Let's look at how the motor actually works. The mystery is that magnetism is an important part of how electric motors work. And Koenigsegg have cleverly combined two methods to create the quark e-motor. It uses something called raxial flux, which sounds made up because it is. Koenigsegg got the name from a combination of radial and axial flux, which are two different ways that electric motors usually function. The two terms refer to the direction in which the motor's permanent magnets create the field. So in a motor, you have coils that rotate between magnets and depends which way round they go. The axial does it along the axis that is more perpendicular and the radial does it around the outside. The difference between these two is that radial flux tends to be more power dense and axial flux tends to be more torque dense. So combining the two who creates what Koenigsegg calls a class leading talk to power to RPM to weight matrix. Are you, are you keeping up? Good. While doing that, they've managed to keep the weight down to an astonishing 30 kilos. And for reference, that's 15 kilograms lighter than the motors Tesla use in its everyday models and about the same weight as the following. A giant otter, a double radiator, a 10-year-old child, a bear cub, a garden bench, a pair of speakers, or an adult Dalmatian. If that hasn't given you a reference, I don't know what will. The Quark achieves the incredible figure by making the shaft out of lightweight alloy steel and even using the air core technology on its rotor, the same stuff that they use in the carbon fiber wheels, the steering wheels, the seats, etc. And Koenigsegg are no beginners when it comes to making things lightweight. The Jesco's 21 by 12 inch rear wheels weigh just 8.4 kilos each. That's less than both of your arms, <laughs> certainly mine. They just love carbon fiber and they're not afraid to use it absolutely anywhere they can. Its dimensions are incredibly small as well. Koenigsegg used an energy drink as a comparison. I think we can do a bit better than that. It's about the same overall size as a watermelon, a similar width to a Passat brake disc, and the same height as a foot-long subway stood on its end. The power output of one 30 kilogram motor is 330 brake horsepower and 443 newton meters of torque. That does sound incredibly impressive, but how does it compare to the most powerful motor that Tesla makes? They're the real benchmark here. There isn't a ton of info on the dimensions and the weight of Tesla's motors, but Elon Musk recently claimed that the ones found in the bonkers Model S Plaid are small and light enough to be picked up by one person. Even without knowing the sizes, that does sound like it could be similar to the Quark, unless Elon Musk has picked his one person as a bodybuilder or something. The Plaid uses one motor in the front and two in the back to make a total power output of 1,006 brake horsepower and just over 1,000 pounds feet of torque. Very similar numbers to what the Quark is capable of with the same amount of motors, albeit less torque. It would be so interesting to compare these two against each other. I know we shouldn't compare a combustion engine to an electric motor because physics and stuff, but it does give you some perspective. BMW's Turbo Straight 6, the B58, makes around the same brake horsepower with just 370 pounds feet of torque, but weighs almost 140 kilos. So where will the Quark be used? Where it differs from Tesla's full EV approach is that it's been designed to bolster an internal combustion engine. The engine in question is the Koenigsegg Gamera's Tiny Friendly Giant, which uses their amazing canless free valve tech. You might have realized from the mad names, crazy horsepower and wild doors that Christian von Koenigsegg likes to do things a little bit differently to everyone else. We might be used to big supercharged turbocharged V8s from Koenigsegg, but the TFG is a relatively small two liter twin turbocharged three cylinder. Koenigsegg, two liters, three cylinders. Surely, surely not. As you might have guessed, Koenigsegg were never gonna leave it there. And so the combustion engine combines with an electric motor on the crankshaft to send 600 brake horsepower to the front wheels. 
Rear drive is then taken care of by a single electric motor on each of the rear wheels. The Gamera will have four seats, eight cup holders, and a combined output of 1,700 horsepower with the use of the electric motors. The numbers are just mind boggling. The idea is that the quark motors will work in combination with the combustion engine, like a tiny little Swedish tag team. The e-motor will handle the low down grunt for instant acceleration and then tap into the combustion engine torque to provide the top end punch. Koenigsegg claims that all of this means that the Gamera will effortlessly surge to a top speed of 248 miles an hour. The best thing is that I don't think anyone will doubt them. Compared to some of their other cars, 248 miles an hour is basically walking pace. At the same time as announcing the Quark, they also announced the Terrier. It's Koenigsegg's name for the new electric drive unit, which houses two Quark motors and a single David inverter. Yes, they made their own inverter and yes, they called it David. It's meant to be like a David and Goliath reference, I think. Not only is it compact, but it can also run two motors at a time where a regular inverter can only handle one. Despite the Terrier's dimensions and total weight of 85 kilos, it's still capable of 660 brake horsepower. It's also a torque vectoring unit, which means it can electronically vary the torque and send it to each wheel. It means no one wheel peels and it's much better handling. It can also help the car rotate and slow down wheels individually, it's very clever. The Terry gets its name because of its small, energetic and fearless demeanor, just like the dog, apparently. There isn't a huge amount of information on it, but Koenigsegg says it can be bolted directly to a chassis or monocoque. That opens up possibilities for different designs in the future, which could mean the removal of additional subframes. This is undoubtedly clever tech, and we can't wait to hear more about it from Koenigsegg. They've even said that the Quark could be used outside of automotive in both marine and aircraft applications, where a power sapping transmission isn't required. The 1700 brake horsepower Gamera may have four seats, but it's not exactly going to be cheap, and only 300 will be made. So I wonder how long it'll be before this compact e motor tech makes its way into more everyday mass produced electric cars. Koenigsegg have said they're offering this tech to visionary companies and entrepreneurs. So who knows what that means? Only time will tell where technology like this will go. Thank you very much for watching. You should check out this other video about Porsche's mad electric turbo, and I'll catch you in the next one.